when that was going on, I checked the I checked the time, okay. and I was like, oh, there's a half an hour left. Yeah, completely yeah. unnecessary. I was, like, I, I was like, I guess this ragtag group is gonna have to save the day somehow. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and then they did. Yeah, I st- I literally have not watched the end of that movie in probably 25 years. Do you think it's weird that when we talked about Police Academy, it was like, oh, they didn't really know what they were doing yet, and they weren't really sure tonally what they were going for. But it ends up they just basically remade Stripes, yeah, tone and all. Like, <laughs> where did they think they were going with it before? <sighs> Welcome back to the Remedial Film Class Podcast. I'm your host, Dan. And I'm Travis. I'm George. And we just watched Police Academy again. <laughs> <laughs> we did bring this up when we watched Police Academy, if you remember. He does not. Police Academy came after us. He does not remember. Uh, we actually watched the movie Stripes from 1980 and 1. George, I'm not going to ask how you're feeling. Travis, how are you feeling, sir? I'm feeling gravy. Feeling you? gravy. Uh, yeah, doing well. Uh, I feeling came in good, on a Lewis? Monday <laughs> and some other stuff to do Ron 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 to do Ron Ron. So nice. Yeah, no mm. no concerns here. <laughs> to do Ron Ron Ron. To do Ron Ron. <laughs> so, yeah, your comment. What? Police Academy came after this. So. Okay. I saw it first. <laughs> Yes, she did. It's the same movie. <laughs> it, is, it is the same movie, but more important than Police Academy. And this better. was a little bit more involved. We watched Police Academy because of the whole police genre. This is like the birth of Bill Murray, the birth of Ivan, Ivan Reitman. Uh, they both go on to make Ghostbusters and like bigger yeah. movies, and like they become something that's yeah, sure iconic. So this is like the baby steps of mm-hmm. that of that relationship. The cast of this movie is so intertwined in what we've already watched that I spent the whole movie going, "Oh yeah," and we talked about them. Oh yeah, yeah we got to touch on this. And I have a feeling you might not have missed or might not have seen everybody. So, <laughs> well, yeah, I, I probably missed it. a lot of people. I definitely saw what's his name from uh, from Fast Times though. Oh, Reinhold. Yeah, Judge Reinhold. He's been in a lot of our movies. Yeah, I love him, bro. How yeah. did I like never know about him before? Yeah, he's 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 stellar, and he was in Gremlins. Like he's everywhere. Yeah. And I know yeah. after, he's a friend of the show. Yeah. After just a week, I'm sure you saw Anthony Michael Hall, and I don't have to ask who it is, and we don't have to do the Evil Dies Tonight speech again because you saw him right. and you were like, "Hey, it's Anthony Michael Hall again." Yes, of course. Great. He's not in, in this, this movie, was, though. And he was, and he was uh, Gary. <laughs> Go, Gary! Yeah, not not in this movie. Yeah, he, he's not here. No, he's not. For the first but time another another actor from last week is in this movie. Yes. There's a few. <laughs> <laughs> this is like the... I know that because you said it last yeah. week. This is like the Cuckoo's Nest Full Metal Jacket yes. uh, episode we haven't done yet. <laughs> like, this is Full Metal Jacket, but funny. Or, I don't know, you might not even think it's funny, but... Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. Like, eat, eat complete with the... Oh, oh, my God. Oh, my God, Crotch Travis came back. Crotch uh, Travis. It's even complete with the ending that could be skipped. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Travis's microphone just went... It just, it just, it just did like a... Whoop. Upside down. It's like it's Stranger Things. Is it a whoop? <laughs> it just went into the upside down. That's, That's okay. amazing. It's still working. Yeah, complete with the ending that you didn't need. Yeah, like when I watched, you know what it reminded me of? Hogan's Heroes. Yes, it's very, very much like that, with some boobs. (laughs) Yes, which are gratuitous. They're put in there what to get the R rating? Is that why they were put in there? You know, I have some real porkies. I have some real boob-related questions for this movie. Uh, We might as well just hit them right off the top, right? Because it's the first thing you notice. Uh. 
<laughs> well, they don't make appearance for a while. The oh, so, uh, uh, the peeping uh, Tom scene. Yes. So sh- I mentioned that uh, earlier tonight to my wife. I was like, you know, it's weird. It has a very Porky's peeping mm-hmm. Tom scene. And we've already talked about Porky's, so I know we're going to talk about it here. But these are like the same year. So what is the peeping Tom scene that inspired both of them? to simultaneously have a peeping Tom scene? Or is it one of those weird, immaculate coincidence boob hmm. scenes? I need Are to know. Are you going to find a connection between uh, the it's writers probably of this something movie Argento and, did. Yeah, it's probably Argento. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was thinking Carrie. You know, we had a okay, recent maybe. Carrie locker room situation with some of the people maybe from this movie. And so is it like, you know... That came out in what seventy five, seventy six. So yeah, it's percolated through the you know the writing community, and now we're writing funny scenes. And hey, we need an R rating, and so we need naked girls. And so hey, how about what Carrie did, but less period blood? Yeah, I don't no, know that's... if that's the the point, but I I will I will make that a point of research going forward, finding me some early to mid seventies shower scenes that look just like Porky's and uh, stripes. And I'll report I back. forgot about that scene, actually. I remember Larroquette looking, pushing the looking glass out the window and dropping it, but I couldn't, I totally <laughs> forgot that that's what he was, that's why he did that. Now, George, John Larroquette, are you familiar with him as an actor? Uh, not Captain really. Stillman from this. He used to be on Night Court. Yeah. That's kind of his big claim to fame. Still is. <laughs> Oh yeah, and he's probably back on the new one. Uh, but the the thing I like him most for George is he is the narrator of the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie. Okay, yeah. So everything in here is based on a true story. Yeah, yeah. He has a cool low voice. And he has a great voice. Like yeah. This. Yeah. So that's him, and now he's here being funny and uh, kind of a shitty captain. Now he's in Antarctica. Yes. Yeah. Waiting for spies like us. Oh, man, before we talk too much about the cast, can we talk about what an excellent job the United States military has done rebranding itself in Hollywood (laughs) since the mid to late 80s? Yeah. Like, uh, you guys have seen the old 60s Batman movie, right? Yes. Where the penguin buys a submarine from the U.S. Navy, and when Batman follows up on it, the Mm. Navy guy is like, let me check. We sold it to a Mr. P. Ing Gwyn. Ing Gwyn. <laughs> with a P.O. box instead of an address. And even mm. Batman's like, you sold a U.S. Navy submarine. That wasn't the worst Adam West impression I've ever done. No, uh, it's actually pretty accurate. <laughs> yeah. A Bastion Belay, Batman. Your tone sounds rather grim. We haven't done anything foolish, have we? Disposing of pre-atomic submarines to persons who don't even leave their full addresses. Good day. So, but you know, he's dragging it out like you sold this to a guy with a PO box. He didn't even check ID. Do 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 do. Yes, we did. Do do. Good luck, Batman. Do do do. <laughs> Vietnam did a lot to how we perceived our military, and you know, thank goodness for yeah. Jerry Bruckheimer, I guess, because they got that shit turned around by the early nineties. Well, there was a, an added scene. I I don't know what version you watched, but there's a scene where uh, Ramus and Murray end up on a paratrooper plane. Oh God. No, I didn't see that. And they it's about an eight minute scene and they end up they I think Ram Ramus wants to leave and uh Murray takes him on this plane and they're gonna they're gonna go AWOL. And these paratroopers all get on and they're going on a mission. And they pretend to be like covert soldiers and they end up going on the mission with them and they do the paradrop and everything. I'm like, this is so, I'm so glad they cut it out because this really doesn't fit in the movie. But it totally says what you're talking about, the military. Like, no one checks their credentials. They all get on. They make them do the drop. Then they bring them back on the return mission. (laughs) And I'm like, what is up with their military? And it's funny that you brought that up, that they they basically make them bumbling idiots. Yeah, well, and the, the weird thing where you have, like, your comedic device gets them into position to do their crazy, like, you know, thrown together uh, cadence march thing. And then Mm. for that to escalate then to, these are the kind of upstarts we want in our military, send them on an important mission. And you're just like, oh, the bumbling. 
just mm. took it. You you expect the bumbling to stop at the top, and instead they just just keep on. It just it just bumbles further. It bumbles the, at a the, higher the tank rate. Is yeah, Eddie's RV. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez Louise! Do you see now, George? Why I sent you a picture of an RV a few weeks ago? Yes, that so. there Clark's an RV. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit, the cast is state of the art. Uh shout out to Harold Ramis, who uh yes. plays Russell, the best friend the 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 do run 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 guy. Yeah. You yes. know. Uh now do you recognize that name at all, George? I do. What do you recognize it from? I have no idea. <laughs> <sighs> do you recognize the the actor who plays Russell? Yeah, I do. What what have you seen him in? Uh, I think just Ghostbusters. Yeah, yeah, and he plays a character named Egon. And mm, yes, low less. Oh, did he? He he wrote stuff too. He told. Well, he's he a co. Me, right? He was a co-writer of this. Yep. Okay. And he also and has. He, he's directed a movie or two. Yeah, just a few. Okay. And he wrote something we just recently watched. Yes. Yeah. What was it? He directed Vacation. The movie we oh. watched last week. That's right. He directed. Duh. It. He didn't, he, he, <laughs> oh my god! We just had this conversation <laughs> yes. like six days ago. Yeah. No. Uh, this is this is for the benefit yes, of our but listeners. Yes, this is the guy. I've actually finally it. put my eyes on the guy, so that's good. <laughs> yeah. Okay. The guy. So that's the guy. He came off of uh, directing Caddyshack and mm. being in this, and went straight into vacation. Vacation. So, right. Yeah. You know, he's a classic. Wow. He was he was firing on all on all cylinders. Mm. Yeah. No, he, he was he was at peak, peak awesome at yeah. that point. Yeah. And oh, he's boy. not a cast member of Saturday Night Live. No, he's an SCTV guy. I think he's an SCTV guy, yeah. That's Which why at, he got at that point, let, you know, I mean, they were killing it, so. Oh, yeah. I don't think there was a talentless person that ever came out of that. When still Second They're, City is so good, they just don't do mm-hmm. the show anymore. Yes, I'm sure that the... The uh, improv group is still killing it today. Oh, my God. So many people in this movie. And, George, I just have to ask, did you recognize the guy that plays John? <laughs> um, Winger? You mean Bill Murray? Hey! hey We need a sound effect yes. for when George guesses it right. Ding, 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 I did ding, not ding, guess. Ding. I knew that. <laughs> <laughs> that, was... <laughs> that was facts. Yeah. Nice. Well, that's good. That's good. Now, how about uh, Stella and Louise, the attractive MPs that seem to follow them everywhere they go and eventually bang them? For what reason? I'm not sure. Mm. Yeah. Um. I feel like I recognize uh, Bill Murray's lady MP, but yes. I, I can't tell where from. <laughs> You you, and... you can't you don't recognize the the blonde. I think is who you're referring yeah. to. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Totally. She's in Halloween. <laughs> she says totally a lot. Go get me a beer. Her name is okay. PJ yeah. Souls, PJ and she Soul. was also in yes. Carrie two she weeks ago. Carol. Yes. Jesus Christ, man. <laughs> Dude, I'm not good at this. I suck at this. This is not this is not news. I bought him a blockbuster trivia game a couple of years ago, and I was like, once we get into this show and we do a few years, we're gonna be able to play this game. And no, I'm realizing we're, we're probably not. We're not gonna be able <laughs> no, to. That's never gonna happen. Uh happening. Louise, the other MP, the the brunette, is played by Sean Young, who was uh the focus of a an episode of oh, a few weeks ago when I discovered that they had rewritten the 1989 Batman movie to remove the horse riding scene, but instead make it a scene at the breakfast table. Do you remember this revelation I had? <laughs> Not really. She was the one that I said she uh, showed up at Tim Burton's office to audition for Catwoman. Yes. Yeah. Cause she fell off the damn horse and hurt herself during the production of Batman. And so she was she no was longer Vicky, Vicky Vale. Oh yeah. 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 I remember yeah. now. So that's yes. Sean Young. She's since done a lot of things, but she went a little crazy in the nineties. Gotcha. But she's probably You remember now. her from Blade Runner. She plays the robot. Yeah. Or the, the oh, AI. That's her. Yeah. And that came, I think, right after this, right? Or vice versa. Like uh, it I think very it was in 79, wasn't it? Or was that 80? Well, either way, it's before this. So yeah. she does this, and then she okay, does Blade she does Runner. This. Back to back. Nice. So there you go. Hmm. 
lot of people Ooh, yeah. in this movie wow. who you don't recognize. Uh, Ox, though, he's pretty familiar, right? Chris Farley, you're a big fan of his. No, oh, stop it. <laughs> um, my yeah, friend, my friends call me Ox. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's what's his name. I know, I know who it is. Oh, I Jesus. can't remember his name. Plain Hold train? on, John Candy. Yes, Polka King of the Midwest. <laughs> Travis was not giving me hand signals. No, I did not. <laughs> I, no hand I don't want to know hand. what the hand signal is for John Candy. <laughs> John Candy. <laughs> I was doing the flute, the uh, polka flute <laughs> that he does. Polka, polka. When he's playing the piano on the, on the dashboard. <laughs> oh my God. Where his uh, cigarette looks like a toothpick. Swallows his aggression and pizzas. Who can blame him? Pizzas yeah. are delicious. Breaking news. <laughs> uh, one person I was excited to see in this, and I didn't recognize them at all. <laughs> I is, like me. Oh, oh, wait, 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 hold on. When I re- when I saw him, I was like, Dan's gonna bring this up. Are, are you talking about the the guy who was arguing with Larroquette on the field for the uh, uh, ordinance? Like the uh, he's oh. telling him to shoot the rocket, and he's like, No, don't shoot the rocket. The mortar like, guy. Just shoot it. Yeah, the mortar guy. We don't know where it's gonna go. But yeah, no, the coordinates. No, that's stuff. not no, who okay. I was gonna bring up. But are you a big Timothy Bus Field fan by chance? Me? Yeah. Well, I know him from a few things. Yeah. Oh, I'm I, a huge Timothy Buzz for Field <laughs> fan. I'm a big fan of his. I just uh, know him from Nerds from is all. Yeah, Nerds, and uh, I think he was on 30-something back in the day. I was a baby when that movie was out. Yeah. Or that, that TV, TV show. show. My mom used to yeah. watch it. It is her generation's This Is Us, from what I understand. Yes, yes it was. Yeah. Which, now that I'm 30-something, maybe I should give it a look. See what <laughs> the fuss was all about. That no, I was going to say... Sergeant Holka, played yes. by Warren Oates. Now, I've seen him in a lot of things, but for me, his face in this movie, like the way he carries himself, reminds me mm. so much of the guy from Blazing Saddles, mm-hmm. who is you know like the head of the construction project or whatever that does camp town races and bounces camp around town? like an idiot. Yeah. <laughs> it's not the same guy, but they have like the same face no. in this movie somehow. Don't know how that works. But Warren Oates, the guy that played Sergeant Holka, is the lead in a movie that I love called Bring Me the Head of Alfredo Garcia. Have you ever seen that? <laughs> I have not. Oh, my uh, God. I know George no. has. A, like, a, <laughs> like a hotel piano player and his prostitute girlfriend go on like a cross-Mexico adventure. It's very like proto-Quentin Tarantino oh. before Quentin Tarantino. Oh, it's fucking cool. But, yeah, it's so weird because he's like a badass, like, kind of cool dude in that movie and in this he's just the opposite and totally unrecognizable underrated huh. amount of acting going on with sergeant holka yeah uh, almost uh what they probably based um lee Ermey's, uh character from full metal jacket on it is bizarre in that this comes before full metal jacket mm-hmm. like the amount of this like if you didn't know any better you would imagine that this was the funny Full Metal Jacket from how it's mm-hmm. set up. But no, 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 no. Yeah, you're yeah, right. I was, wait- I was waiting for John Candy to end up in the bathroom yeah, with, yeah. with a shotgun. 100%. It's so <laughs> bizarre like, that, to see that. Yeah. They, that is private yeah. pile. Yeah. It's bizarre. Yeah. And when they showed his like short, short fuse temper, I was like, oh boy, is he going to have... Mm. Obviously, I, did, I saw this before I saw Full Metal Jacket, but the the characters are very similar. And it reminds me, this movie reminds me a lot of uh, Officer and Gentleman as well. So that's all kind of around the same time. It's weird, I love when, but that is not a comedy. I love when John Candy was playing poker. <laughs> okay. guy. He's like, no. He's like, no, nah, that's a good hand. I would bet it all. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good hand. You should play that. You're doing good. <laughs> not bad for your first time. You're learning real quick. He takes all his money. And he's sitting there like, that stupid look on his face, like, like oh Ooh. no, we're in now. Uh, yeah, son, we're... they don't they don't draft anymore. Where where were That's they? So funny. He's like, oh no, so you got to make my bunk. If we were in Germany, it'd be different. I'd have to make your bunk. <laughs> yeah, and that bunk, <laughs> the the way they frame that shot reminds me so much of the soap beating. And mm-hmm. like seriously, yeah. I'm not. I think we're not kidding here, listeners. <laughs> no, this movie. I know. Visually, I'm telling you, when I was watching it, I was waiting for a Winger to get beat with with yeah. bars of soap. It visually echoes Full Metal Jacket in a way that I did not expect. Having now Who come would have back thought that Kubrick later. was a fan of Ivan Reitman? Who knew? <laughs> Who yeah. knew? Damn. Yeah, we uh, last night my my wife was watching Juno, and so she 
had me sit down and watch that. Have you guys seen that in forever? Uh, yeah, a while ago, yeah. That's not like, I don't think I'd seen it since it came out, probably. I was going to say, that came out like a long time ago, yeah, right? But it's 2008 or something? As the credits are going by, Jason Reitman directed that. I was mm-hmm. like, oh shit, we're watching Stripes tomorrow. And she's like, mm-hmm. how does that connect? <laughs> you know, there, there's yeah. Stripes on the cover. It's like, no, 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 His son, ah, forget it. It's fine. <laughs> Uh, He's taking up his legacy What's his awesome mental. about Juno though I mean it's a good movie uh, Hot take for a movie that won a bunch of Oscars uh, mm. But yeah, right. I remembered The Wizard of Gore Discussion but I forgot that She was on team Dario Argento mm. Because I don't even know that I was that Into Dario Argento when that movie Came out so shit Juno What year did that it. come out? Was it 2008? 2007 I think Seven? yeah so right about the same time I'm getting into Argento, that movie comes out, and that's pretty cool. Boom. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. It's like it's like the mortar that should have been aimed somewhere else just landed on my head. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> wow, that was a good one. That was a good one. <laughs> you and baby Jessica are down in the well. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, bad oh, callback to the 80s. Sorry, Jessica. But since we're doing 80s. She's movie, alive, it's fine. She is alive. So, Mud Wrestling John Candy. Mud Wrestling yeah, how about that? <laughs> John Candy. Uh, that's a new bucket list item I didn't know I needed. Yeah. Was to Mud Wrestle John Candy. Unfortunately, guys, he's dead. So, and yeah. I checked that one. Are leave. we sure? Yeah, I'm I'm positive. He's not with us Pretty anymore. Pretty sure he 100% left us sure. in the 90s. <laughs> Or maybe that was Chris okay. Farley. I get them mixed up. I I'm sh- I'm I'm positive that Chris Farley. Sorry, folks. Is not alive. John Candy's dead. The moose out front should have told you. <laughs> That's exactly what I was gonna say. Oh, it's so disrespectful. Sorry, Mr. Candy. Sorry, John oh, Candy's dead. The moose out front should have told you. We kid because we love. Yes. I uh, the thing I came up with when watching this for the umpteenth time but with a different eye. We got to see, and I think this is what I meant by it being important, we get to see Bill Murray's process on developing one single character that will carry his entire career. (laughs) Yeah. His winger becomes Peter Venkman. Yeah. Easily. like It's almost like watching him on SNL taking a character and then just popping him in little situations where he finally fleshes out the character, and then we get Peter Venkman. So, Winger is the Peter Venkman. Proto. Yeah. Proto Venkman. Proto. Hey, uh, Proto speaking Venkman. of SNL characters in their prototypical form, uh, if anybody watched what is last week's episode now when we record, the episode with uh, Coldplay hosted by the Mandalorian himself, Pedro Pascal, uh, you know, from that, that Last of Us show. But anyway, uh, they debuted a new <laughs> set of English rappers on Weekend Update. Millie Pounds and Shirty. Oh, I'm serious. It was less than a minute into the sketch, and I'm already thinking, where's the movie of this? It's the first time since at least Night at the Roxbury, but maybe back to Wayne and Garth, that like the characters are so good in their first appearance that I need a fucking movie. So mm. Lauren, get her done. Get it done. Give me that rapping mm. British guy. I'll send the clip to George so he can understand the brilliance. Yes, please do. So good. Hmm. You know what else is good? Joe Flaherty shows up in this movie. I love that guy. Yes. He plays the border guard. He plays the dad on Freaks and Geeks. He's the priest in Detroit Rock City. He's amazing, and he was good here too. He had a lot of little cameos. Lee Harvey. That story about you and the cow. <laughs> so good. Yeah. <laughs> I want to party with, with the you, cow. Man. I want to party with you, big man. Yeah, it's a great quote. There's a lot of quotes in this movie that I realized I forgot that where it came from. And uh like the <laughs> I know I know you probably ble- breeze past the beginning where they he uh Ramus is doing the uh English teaching class it's so good it's so good but growing up 
we would say son of bitch shit all the time. <laughs> <laughs> and I forgot where that came from. There's another one. I think it's in Bad Boys where the, they pull a gun on the guy and he's like, I'll blow you. Instead of I blow you away. He's like, I'll blow you. <laughs> and he points the gun at his head. I'm like, whenever I, I don't know. It's it's inappropriate because it's a, it's a stereotypical thing. But the uh, son of bitch shit is hilarious to me. I don't know why. And I was like, oh, it was like an old friend. When I heard it, I was like, oh, my God, there it is. That's yeah. where it's from. <laughs> that and the, uh, we're we're not gay, but we're willing to learn. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Convicted? No, no. <laughs> so I like how, it, like, there was two questions on the questionnaire. And that's it. <laughs> it's like, all right, sign your name. That's your post-draft pre-Bruckheimer military, man. They were taking yeah. all comers. We don't draft anymore. Yeah, it's so funny. <laughs> so weird that that's the same guy. Like, I mean, I'm going to find yeah. you a clip for after the show of the Alfredo Garcia character so you can be like, oh, wow, Joker level acting. Hmm. There is no Joker le- level acting in this film. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> at no, all. No, no. no, this is a. This is clearly the budding of careers, but yeah. We're getting Bill Murray like meatballs Bill Murray. We're not getting you know, quick change Ghostbusters kind of Bill Murray. Millie Lost Pounds and Shirty. Yeah, that's the rap duo that need their own movie. Uh, guys, if you haven't already done so from my earlier description, make sure you Google Millie Pounds or just look up Weekend Update SNL Rappers and it'll be the first one. <laughs> hmm. I can't remember the last time I watched SNL, so I'm going to have to check it out. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. So we never even asked George how he felt. We didn't need to. <laughs> We're just kind of getting the barometer from, like, the he's he's just, like, leaking it out. He's like, it's like an aura. <laughs> <laughs> I mean. But he was humming, there she was. Just Oh, yeah. 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 I was humming that the entire time. I, We're setting up. I do have to say, I stopped watching it after they got recruited to Italy. It kind of feels it, like the end of the movie. Yeah. The rest of it graduate, feels a bit unnecessary. You you shouldn't have anything after that little performance at the graduation. Because that's Bill Murray at like 11. He's still in his... In the movie, his best stuff in that that last 10 minutes before they go to Italy. Hey, that's, yeah, when that, that's a fact. When that was, Jack. When that was going on, I, checked the, the I checked the time. Okay. And I was like, oh, there's a half an hour left. Yeah, completely yeah, unnecessary. I was like, I guess this ragtag group is going to have to save the day somehow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then they did. Yeah, I, st- I literally have not watched the end of that movie in probably 25 years. Do you think it's weird that when we talked about Police Academy, it was like, oh, they didn't really know what they were doing yet, and they weren't really sure tonally what they were going for. But it ends up they just basically remade they, Stripes, yeah. tone and all. Like, <laughs> where did they think they were going with it before? <sighs> I don't know. Police Academy 2. <laughs> it turns out they knew exactly what they I were doing. I stand by Police Academy 2 way better than the first one just because it knows yes. what it is. Yes. But why didn't and they it, know what it was before? Because it's this, and this was already out. Like, and it introduces Zed, which is the best character in that movie. Bob <laughs> Goldthwait character. <laughs> He's so good. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. I used to be a real draft, but now I'm a people guy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He's good in that movie. Good stuff. He's the guy in Scrooge that has the shotgun and is trying to kill Bill oh, Murray yeah, the whole yeah, movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He plays this gang member in Police Academy 2, and he, like, the character in that movie. <laughs> he plays of, a gang member? Yeah, he's like a street yeah, tough, leather street bound tough. guy. Oh, <laughs> and then, That's pretty good. And then he, become, he becomes a cop eventually. Okay. I don't want to give it away. Spoiler alert. <laughs> well, <laughs> I don't think we're watching it. But yeah, his he's. A friend of mine posted a picture of my Facebook that uh of uh, that character, and I was like, because we used to do that voice back and forth in middle school. Yeah. Uh, big shout out to Arthur. Um, and I'm like, I can hear that picture. Like, you could just mm-hmm. look at that picture, and you can hear both of them. Because Sweet Chuck is another nerdy character that he he's actually is he in the original 
or is he from the second movie? I think he's Dan. in the second movie. I don't remember. Okay, him so they introduced the him too. So those two are like Batman and the Joker. <laughs> <laughs> okay. In in part two, Sweet Chuck's like this little weaselly little nerd. Yeah, it's pretty funny. It's Makes not bad. Promotes. It's not good by any means. It's not good, but it's not bad. But like, if you can make it through the first one and this movie, you could probably make it through that. Is nineteen eighty one zero for two on comedies for you, George? Between this and Porky's, oh, this was better than Porky's. Yeah. Yes, this Agreed. is better than Porky's. Although, when it comes to moments, I think Porky's is better. No way. The shower scene's a lot funnier. With all the dick grabbing <laughs> in Porky's, but this yeah, one that but the the deciding factor for me is the ball breaker stuff. The the oh the yeah, you love that part like, so much. The oh print the principal scene. I, I love the the Lassie teacher thing with that just how the, everybody's laughing. How she, when she, down in the gym, yeah, like, yeah, there's yeah. a lot of moments in that movie. Yeah, the movie kind of is terrible, but there's to me a lot of moments in that movie that are more memorable. Than Stripes. Stripes is a good character movie that just never goes anywhere. Yeah, I kind of wish they would have cut out a lot of the action adjacent stuff and just done more John Candy talking Cuckoo's with nest. Ramus behind him making faces because mm-hmm. that is such a delight. <laughs> yeah, to watch it should have been like, Cuckoo's making that nest, face. But like, funny. Yeah, yeah. What? What? Yeah. Yeah. Funny those Cuckoo's two together, nest. That's gold. legit. Like I would watch hilarious Cuckoo's nest. Yeah. As I want to see those characters because my favorite scene in Stripes, other than the graduation scene, is the the uh, the big toe scene. Yeah, like oh, all, yeah, all yeah, those yeah. little interactions, all that character stuff that's kind of missing throughout the movie because they realize they got to make some kind of army movie. <laughs> we we yeah. bought all this shit. It, we need to use yeah, it. Yeah, we bought, we bought all we rented it. Now we got to use it. No, it should have been a lot of the barrack stuff, a lot of the. Back and forth because you saw uh, Biloxi Blues, right? Because you brought that up before. I saw that a long time yeah. ago. Yeah. Biloxi Blues is kind of what this should have been. Just all that interaction. I don't that... remember Biloxi Blues being very funny. It was like well, a feel it's, good it's, movie. It's wasn't it? But it's Neil Neil Simon. You know, it's it's a play. It, it there's a lot of good characters. It's been humor. a long time. It's yeah. been a long time. But I felt like my my impression is that that was like a feel good kind of. But there's a lot of, of character. It's kind of like Ferris Bueller. Like, yeah. just a lot of characters in situations instead of showing me a bunch of situations and then there just happens to be some characters in the scene. I want the characters. And then you can put them in anything. Yeah. All right. So for me, this movie... The, okay, so for me, this movie is Bill Murray. Yes. Bill Murray's character, like you said, he goes on to play this character in every other movie he's ever going to be in. Perfected um, in Ghostbusters. I don't I don't care that that is the case. I love this character. Mm-hmm. Um he reminds me a lot of you in this Ghost, movie. Ghostbusters. <laughs> I do have to say. <laughs> Ghostbusters, <laughs> Groundhog Day, just Bill Murray yes. being Bill Murray. I wonder if he's like that in real life. Probably. I pr- I, you would think, right? He is a lot like you. His, <laughs> this character, when I was watching this movie, like the scene with Harker in the in the uh, Hulka in the uh, bathroom in the latrine, mm-hmm. just his behavior, his <laughs> like f- fuck you attitude yeah. is like, I'm like that's George. Like I can totally see him doing that. That that kind of behavior. Yeah, it's it. <laughs> it's not a bad thing. Yeah, no, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Not the loser stuff. Not the the very beginning, Bill Murray. I, even the very beginning, the loser stuff. The, I mean, you have to, you have to hit rock bottom. Yes, but that you didn't know? remind me of you. Just when he gets to the army and his interactions with everybody reminds me of you. Uh, I would say that the, the the scene where his girlfriend is leaving him <laughs> reminds me of me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're joking around. She's doing yes. a life change, and you're yes. joking around. And yeah. yeah, but you know what? That's that's how I diffuse <laughs> the situation like, with my no. wife. It's like, but look at how much potential I have. Yeah. Like she'll say something, <laughs> we'll be fighting. I'm like, yeah, and you're ugly, and it's like it totally changes the demeanor of 
yeah. what we're fighting about. And we yes. kind of, you know, you just move on. You do it too. I've seen I it. do it. Yeah. 100%. Diffuse the situation with insults. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I like the basketball <laughs> part that made me laugh. Oh, through the window? Yeah. And then, like, yelling down, <laughs> and they throw it through the other window. <laughs> hey, yeah, thanks. Yeah, who, <laughs> thanks, bud. He takes the wrench, cleans the window up. <laughs> That's what's funny to me. It's a pipe wrench. Oh, my God. <laughs> it's a fine film. I'm glad we watched it. I don't know if there's Smart really is... much to mine out of it, though. No, just... The Full Metal Jacket thing still just blows my mind. How much... Yeah. You know, having seen both of those movies a bunch, but then finally seeing it, like, oh god, like. And when did that come out? That was like eighty-seven. Eighty-seven. Okay, I was gonna say eighty-six. That was close. Huh. It's wild, man. So they stole the plot of stripes to make Full Metal Jacket. I don't know if I'd say that, but it certainly <laughs> uh, visually uh, informed some of it. Yeah. Or they're just coincidental, you know. Did they have the same obstacle course from uh, Silence of the Lambs? No, no, that's not the Quantico <laughs> obstacle <laughs> course. <laughs> if there was one scene where like John Candy like runs straight into the woods, <laughs> and I was like, that looks like that looks like the same one. I don't know. I mean, it was just looked like woods. But I was like, I feel like I've been on this this course before, but. I don't know. It is really sad that they basically just remade this and it was Police Academy. <laughs> like, even the haircut scene. It's really, like, yeah, it's like, exactly the like same. Like, when the one guy comes in in Police Academy and he's like, just take a little bit off the top. And they're like, you can do that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus. Uh, yeah, it's exactly the same. So, what are we watching next week, George? I don't know. Oh, I do know. You do oh, know. I do know. I know. Because, Are you announcing what we're watching? Yes, because um, I got the rare opportunity. Um, I don't know if Dan just messed up and like sent it to the wrong chat. <laughs> nope, nope. I sent it to you because I want to make sure everybody's chair. aware of what's going on. Um, but he was like, oh, we're going to watch this with this person. Mm. And, and Travis was like, this week I thought we were doing stripes, and he's like, "No, <laughs> stripes." Then that with this person. This and is I was a full like, report oh. of our group. I was chat. like, yeah. "Yeah." I was like, "Am I in the right chat? Like, how did I get in?" George this chat? got to see the soup being made. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. So what are we watching so next week, George? It's a uh, Guffman. It's waiting for Guffman. We're waiting for. It's Guffman. waiting for Guffman. And who Which is our special guest? Minnie Megs. Minnie Megs coming back. Any idea why we're watching this? It was her idea. This is her movie. She wants to, Mm. she wants to divergenize you with the guff manatee. I and I can't wait. This is good because I haven't seen it either. Oh, nice. Yeah, I haven't either. I'm very excited. I know who made it, and I know who's in it, so I know I'm gonna like it. Yeah, me too. But I oh wait, you haven't seen it either. This is the first time watch for all of us. Oh shit! So she better deliver, Megs. I'm excited for the movie now. I'm excited for you guys. I'm excited for Mini Mags. Yeah. I mean, and I know who's involved, so can be a good it episode can't next go week. wrong. If we can turn a 20-minute Halloween episode into a two-and-a-half-hour, three-part epic with Mini yeah. Mags, I can't wait to see what happens with this movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Can't wait to watch it. Cool. Thanks. Our, thank our listeners there, George. Hey, listeners. Thanks a lot, guys. I'm yeah. glad you liked Vacation, or we would have been like batting over three now. Yeah. I I did not com- like this. Comedy. This I I you can't you can't you know not like you can't miss Bill with Murray. the Bill Murray movie. Yeah, you, you can't, can't miss with the Ivan Reitman movie and John Candy guys, yeah. my hero and John, and John Candy. Can- yeah, I mean it was it was and and don't forget Psycho. Psycho and Psycho. Francis. <laughs> don't oh, me Francis. lighten up, Francis. You made the list. <laughs> you made the list. <laughs> I wonder if uh, Chris Jericho stole that from him. Oh, I finally get to kill somebody. <laughs> it's so good. You just made the list. You are number one on the list. Any of you touches my shit. No, but the this movie was like really, really corny and had really, really great funny people in it. Yeah. Now, so, if you hadn't seen Police Academy and you hadn't seen... Porkies, you probably would have appreciated this a little bit more. 
Thank you for joining us on the Remedial Film Class Podcast. As we said, we'll be back next week with a special guest, Minnie Meg, is returning to bring us her favorite movie, Waiting for Guffman. Speaking of that, I was happy to listen. <laughs> You're going to cut this out. Uh, <laughs> I was happy to <laughs> listen to. Is the that epi- a prediction yeah, or a vacation uh, episode today? And realized that Audrey is not dead. <laughs> oh yeah, no, I cut that whole section out. <laughs> it's just like this is a I lot of speculation. T- yeah, I was gonna send you a text today. Go, oh, she's alive. Because <laughs> all that shit we talked about was gone. Something we could have easily googled at the time. <laughs> no, it's but you know funny. me. Offhand comment. I think she's dead. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> And then you just breezed by it. I'm like, oh, I guess she's alive. This is the good. But Dana Plato said. This is some really good post credit <laughs> stuff. Yeah, it turns out this isn't getting cut. This is just getting moved to the end. It's, it's getting moved. <laughs> oh, my That's God. Not How is cut. the soup made? It reminds Boom. me so much of that bit from, well, who's the guy? Pete Holmes that plays the the crappy Batman and all those Excuse me, YouTube Holmes? videos. <laughs> yeah, excuse, excuse me, Pete Holmes. Excuse uh, me, Holmes. <laughs> he's got a, an old stand-up bit about how we used to just not know things for a while. It like had to germinate while we looked for an opportunity to like find a a book about it. So his bit is, where is Tom Petty from? I don't know. We should talk (laughs) about it at a bar and speculate. And then later we'll go look it up or we won't, you know? So is Audrey dead? I don't, maybe. I don't know. I haven't seen her in a while. (laughs) So I want to check on Audrey. Ross? (laughs) Wellness check. (laughs) Wellness check on Audrey. She's fine. Uh, it turns out. She is fine. Okay. Wonderful. She's not strapped to the top of the car yet. No. No. Uh, <laughs> we have to wait for the third generation remake of Vacation where she'll be old enough to play the new Aunt Edna. 